Welcome everyone. Today I'm here mm. with Cori Louise and she is an artist of soul work and mother of two sons of two and five. And we got to meet each other actually today for the first time through a common dear mm. friend, Sia. And when we were sharing about who would be a beautiful woman to represent the archetype of the mother and also a beautiful embodiment of the whore, she immediately mm. named you. <laughs> and as I was looking yeah. at your pictures on social media, I could see it. I could see the yeah. beautiful embodiment yes. of both archetypes. So yeah, welcome. It's so home. funny. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, when Sia messaged me, I just replied like just laughing, like a voice message. I was like, of course, like of course, like I'm really scared to do this, but I can't say no. Like, <laughs> um. It's just who I am and uh, I don't know how to be any other way. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I feel curiosity when you say artist of soul work. Can you share a little mm. bit about like, mm. what, what is it that you're doing in the world? Yes. Yes. So for me, I feel like conditioning is such a massive thing that is placed upon us from such a young age. And really we're never actually showing how to paint our own canvas of life, how to be an expression of our true authentic self, how to paint ourselves with literally gold because there are so many things um, that have been almost blacked out upon us to how that truly is. So what I love to do is hold spaces for women to peel back those canvases and make them white to paint them then whatever fucking color they like because we need those spaces we need people to show up in their authentic truths we need people to be as fucking colorful as they want to be because otherwise we're living this blurred grayed out lie and so that's why I like to call myself an artist of the soul or soul work because our soul is in a creative amazing orgasmic form and when we pick up the paintbrush and know that we're the ones in control of creating this, this masterpiece, this artwork, we live life in such a beautiful flow. And so, yeah, I, that's, that's a little bit of what I do. And I do it through dance. I do it through embodiment. I do it through um, just sharing and being in space with other women and, um, I do it through painting and art as well. Just so many different, different mediums, but um, mostly it's about peeling back the conditioning and what we've been told, how we need to be and rewriting it or repainting it. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And with all of that beautiful work, you're also a mother of two. And yes. I'm <laughs> really curious if you want to share a bit about you as a mother. Yeah, and me as a mother, um, it's, it's, it's different to lots of other mothers, that's for sure. Um, I take my own authentic way of parenting and I let my children be those little wild beings that they so desperately want to be. And for me, I don't want them to grow up in a world where they feel they need to be a certain way and they need to give in to conditioning or they need to express themselves in a certain way. Like I feel so sorry for children because they're expected to be happy all the time. They're expected to show up constantly behaving and having, you know, manners and all these things. And it's so much pressure for little humans. I mean, as, as adults don't show up every single day happy or showing the best type of behavior. And we have, obviously the intellect to process that, but they don't. So I do a lot of like, I have two boys, so lots of testosterone, really full on, but I do a lot of release work with them when I can tell that they're super agitated and they're fighting or they're just not communicating clearly to each other. I just like, I'm like, right, we're putting on the machine. Like everyone go punch a pillow, like shake your body, live <laughs> little lamb. And I just, feels and I don't think that's quite common in parenting um you know tantrums are not okay uh, we try to to send them to their room when they're in their deepest most 
vulnerable states or like, you know, we just don't want to deal with it. So we're like, go to your room. Well, that's what I remember anyways, as a, um, as a child, instead of taking them and being like, what do you need? Mm. What, what do you need right now? Like, you just want me to hold you while you cry. I'm here for that. And so that's, I guess what I'm like as a mother. And, um, yeah, I just want to give them every tool possible to navigate their emotions and to know that as two boys, it's okay to have them and to process them and to not let them come out in negative ways and um, to communicate with love always. So, yeah, that's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of what I do. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I feel curious when you share this, how, how the mother in you was before you became a mother. And I ask that mm. because I feel that um, I have a lot of the mother archetype in me um, since I was very young. And there is a yeah. part of me that feels a little bit nervous of becoming a mother one day. Mother. Because yeah. I have a feeling like there's already so much mother in me. Oh my God, what will happen, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's kind of overflow. I yeah, I feel curious to what, like, what qualities of the mother so... were with you before you became a physical mother to children. I was always, I mean, I grew up, um, I used to teach dance to preschool children. So I always, um, I always loved nurturing and caring for children. Um, and I always had a real soft spot for just being a child and playing. And like, you know, when I'd go to a barbecue with my friends that had kids, you'd always find me like actually playing with the kids rather than talking with the adults because I found it so easy to tap into that childlike playfulness and that's kind of where what I was like as a mother pre-mothering like learning how to play again and learning how to just be with the children and be present and how you can see life so much more beautiful when you are um and yeah I wouldn't say that I was overly like the 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 heart the heart space what it was it was more like a playful mind childlike but when I physically birthed my own child it was literally like my heart <laughs> ripped outside of my chest and I understood what unconditional love meant it was like I was very young also when I became a mum I was only 21 and so it was a huge um a huge shift on responsibilities and understanding all the things my parents had gone through and the sacrifices they made and just growing the baby and birthing the baby. I was like, holy shit. I'm so sorry, mom. I'm sorry for everything I ever did. Um, and that was just after birthing him. And so, yeah, there's a lot of initiation and a lot of learning that comes from all the cycles of becoming a mother throughout your life um, from a young age when you're playing with your dolls to growing up and mothering even your partners or your friends and then actually physically birthing and becoming a mother it's like this full cycle and your heart is like the center of it and it's just like yeah it's it's like the most magical explosion of feeling that you can't even really put into words <laughs> yeah Beautiful. yeah but yeah, massive sacrifice. Like, um, because I was so young, I, I just got consumed with the idea of becoming a mother and it kind of ruled my life. Like I went so long without even brushing my hair or, you know, doing little things to look after myself. And that's where I needed my whore to like bitch slap me and say, excuse me, you're not just a mother. Mm. You are this too. And um, yeah, I definitely was consumed in the mother, the mother um, archetype. And it was nice to come out of that. Yeah. yeah. So before we go, so before we go there to more of the whore, I feel curious because <laughs> you name what I hear you say as a mother, that I, I hear you say the unconditional love I hear you say like the holding the space for whatever shows up in your children. I feel curious to what, yeah. what other qualities you sense in the mother, like what other gifts she holds in, in you, the mother in you. Mm. Mm. There's this divine knowing that comes from a mom. You know, when a mom says like, I know everything. It's like, they truly do know everything. And it's a sense of being so in tuned with myself 
and with my boundaries and with my authority and with the way that I present myself and how I protect my children and my loved ones and how I know that I'm so deeply held and connected also by Gaia and earth. It's, it's, it, it's, it's literally like you are the centerpiece of the altar when you are the mother and how you are like this candle almost that can, and that can light so many different flames and so many different wicks. Um, and that's something that I feel I definitely bring through as the mother archetype is like standing strong and like the sacrifice piece is there as well. Cause your wax is like melting as you keep the strong wick constantly burning, but it's sacrifice that you're willing to give because you are, you are love itself when you are the mother. Mm. Yeah. I love this analogy of the candle. <laughs> the yeah. candle. Yeah. yeah. It's good. So I feel curious to when, when you said you were being consumed by the mother, like what, mm. like what, like painful aspects or maybe shadow aspects or yeah. contracted yeah. aspect did you meet in that, in the mother argument? Mm. Mm. So for me, I tried to do everything by myself. I didn't ask for help. I thought I was a bad mother if I asked for help. I didn't let my partner's um, family in because I was so controlling and I wanted to do everything myself. I, I, cause I knew the way that my baby wanted to be served. I knew the way my baby wanted to eat food. I knew the way like so much that I was just like suffocating and I was just like, Oh my God, why doesn't anybody help me? But I wasn't allowing myself to be helped because I was consumed by my absolute love for this child that it like ate me from the inside out. <laughs> and I stopped looking after myself. Um, I stopped doing daily routine for myself. Like I, it was just all for him. And I didn't care because I was like, I love you so much. I'll do everything for you. <laughs> Like you are my master, um, which is, <laughs> which is totally cool. But um, the biggest thing that I regret is not allowing people to help me because I had a breakdown. Like I just, I couldn't do it all by myself. I couldn't, I couldn't raise this child and look after myself and do everything by myself and I just I was like why does nobody see how much I'm doing like I'm just like driving myself crazy about how much I'm looking after this child how much I'm trying to do everything by myself and I just yeah I just lost it pretty much and that was kind of this when I was like I need to come back into myself I need to find something to like <laughs> this is really sad right I went for a job interview after I had Phoenix and they asked me, so what do you like to do? Like, you know, in your spare time, like, tell me about yourself. And I was like, so I'm a mom. And that like, I could not <laughs> think of anything else. And I was like, oh my God, Corey, like you are so many things. You are so many things. You love so much stuff. And so I needed to rediscover myself again. And I needed to take a step back and call in my tribe and be like, please watch my child while I go and have a shower and shave my legs and then go for a walk in nature by myself because I deserve that. Um, and yeah, so that's the definitely the huge shadow, shadow aspect. And also um, something that's just come in for me is um, the disconnection from my physical body and my desires and my erotic self because I used to be a lingerie model before I had kids and then when I was pregnant with Phoenix I put on 30 kgs that's three zero that's like a seven-year-old child was stuck onto my body so I I was massive and I got a lot of stretch marks like my belly literally looks like a jelly board and in between my thighs there were these just look like somebody had clawed their way like into my yoni um and I remember just being mortified and like I had this set idea of what sexy was and what felt good to be in my body and the shadow aspect of I, I see in so many mothers is they just disconnect from their erotic self their pure delicious like it doesn't fucking matter what you look like um how many stretch marks you have or whatever there's this huge disconnection there and so I went through a massive process of learning to re-love my body and to honor it and to look at those stretch marks as 
a huge achievement. Like I grew life inside my body. Like that is, that is actual real life magic. Um, Mm. and learning to be in my sensual, sexual, erotic self with this new body, with these new breasts, with this new belly, with this, this expansion inside my womb and my yoni. And, um, yeah, that was a journey. (laughs) That was a journey for sure. But since I started honoring my body, my stretch marks have started to turn like a see-through color. My skin is starting to become more elastic and my body is going back into it. It's, it's, it's not what it was before, but a new beautiful form because I'm not neglecting it. I'm not looking at it in shame. I'm not, I'm not, um, sorry. I'm not, yeah, I'm not neglecting it. That's the biggest part. When you become a mother, it's like you are so consumed on some other um, the extension of your heart rather than turning it inwards and putting that attention also onto yourself. Mm. And I feel I like obviously, yeah. 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 I love how you say that. When you become a mother, there's so much attention on the extension of your heart. And I feel this is so true also for the ones who are not a mother of, of children yet. Mm. Um, I feel that when we, when we embody the mother very strongly, there is this attention outward to the other and we forget to bring that, that energy back in and, and also take care of ourselves. Yeah. And I love in the beginning when you named that the whore came for you and she slapped you in your face. Yes. Like, she was can you like, share oh a bit goodness. more about that moment? Yeah. So <laughs> anyone that's seen me dance or seen me in my embodiment practices, doesn't matter which archetype I am embodying. It could be the wild woman. It could be... It could be my maiden, it could be my slut, it could be anything. And it's always sensual. It's always seductive. It's always so juicy. (laughs) And it's because it is who I am. Like inside me is the most sensual, erotic being, which is my whore. And she, she just knows exactly what she wants and what she deserves and that you can have the best of both worlds. You can be a mother and you can also fucking be a whore. You can own both sides of you. And that doesn't make you any less of a pure, it doesn't make you any less of a fucking saint. Like you can be whatever you want. And that's what the whore taught me. She's like, you don't fucking have to fit into any box, into any category. You don't have to, you don't have to be that kind of soccer mom. You can be the mom that you choose to be. And the most beautiful thing here is that I'm showing my boys what an embodied sensual, healthy woman looks like, and they're not going to go out and try and find it in something that's not real. They're going to look at their mother and be like, okay, so that's what an embodied woman looks like. She embodies her stretch marks. She embodies her sexuality. She embodies her power. She is a mother. She has this expanding heart. And also she can be whatever the fuck she wants to be. And I, I hope that my two sons will go out and they'll, they'll honor women for that. They'll see that in a woman and they won't try and stunt it or blow that woman's flame out or judge her or call her names. They'll just be like, yes, 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 I see you. I see you. <laughs> and that's, Beautiful. that's what I really, really, um, really want. And yeah, like I wish I had more sensual and erotic and um just whore figures <laughs> in my life that I felt so inspired by and that I didn't feel dirty or I didn't feel like I was wrong or I didn't feel like playing with myself from a young age was a bad thing it's like we are all born sensual little beings like it's literally in our DNA um and so yeah, it's, it's hard. It is hard to own your whore and to not feel the layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of judgment and conditioning and preset mind expectations of what that word means mm. and bringing it back into its most purest form because that's, we're all born this way. We're all born pure mm. and erotic beings and bring it back to that. Yeah. Take away the tarnished, the tarnished vision of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do, you have, do you have a sense with, with 
why this archetype is so misunderstood in this world because i feel she's also judged upon and rejected mm, misunderstood mm. and honestly i think it's because of the power that she holds she can be so influential she can literally get somebody to change their mind like this and i think that people see power and they're extremely intimidated by it and they don't know how to hold space for it a lot of the time so that's probably where a lot of the name calling and the judgment and the fear of not understanding the power behind something so let's just tarnish it because that's way easier than actually bringing it to the surface and allowing it to be mm. yeah beautiful yeah 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 oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, mm. Mm. so do you feel that the i feel curious to the process like of the whore in you before you became a mother and the whore in mm. you now mm. like mm. are they similar mm. are they mm. different like what how how this that like you shared yeah. about the evolution of the mother in you i feel curious to the evolution of the whore in you as well definitely um i'm just checking my battery it's low i might have to go get a charger in a second but um so my whore pre becoming a mother was definitely a little bit like she gave herself probably without her sovereignty and without her boundaries. And so she was taken advantage of. Um, when I became a mother, it was like, no one, no one can fuck with this. Like I pushed a baby outside of it. Like this is sovereign. This is the portal between life and death. Like, um, yeah, I, 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 I took my whore into my arms and I, the mother into my arms. And I said, you know, like, yes, you can be all of those things. Yes. You can own all of your desires. Yes. You can live the most juiciest life. And I'm here to protect and hold you in that. I'm here to help you understand clear boundaries. I'm here to make sure that you understand how sovereign and beautiful and incredible you are because mm -hmm. sometimes the whore can live in a life of pleasure and fun and all of these things. And yes, this is what I freaking want without, um, without having those clear boundaries and without having that clear protection of herself. And that's when she can be taken advantage of. And that's when she can also, yeah, just be really hurt. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I love that you bring this. I can relate a lot with it also now that my whore energy is coming back more fully. I can feel mm. how the mother in me can can hold it in a clean way. This power, yeah. this, this yeah. like watch like the whore and her all her desires. The mother in me can hold her in a clear and clean way. Clean way. So yeah. fascinating for me. Yeah. yeah. So I feel we're we're moving here to the integration of the mother and the whore and how can they how they are so beautifully of support for each other. Yeah, um, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they need each other so much. And like 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 I said, everyone has these aspects inside of them, regardless of their if like you were saying, you have these mother aspects and you're not actually a physical mother. And you you know, like we all have these little puzzle pieces inside of us and they're all needed to be activated so we can live in our best, most amazing life. Um mm. and and but the two the mother and the whore together it's just like this beautiful dance of like you're held and i see you and yes let's go and do that thing because <laughs> we deserve it and yeah it's so needed mm. yeah my my <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> yeah so we were mm. like the mother and the whore they need each other and I feel curious for the ones who are a physical mom or who are embodying the mother very strongly um, mm -hmm. and feel a resistance or a shame upon embodying the whore as a mother. What, what would you have to say to them? Mm. It's okay. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to feel that shame because it has been 
literally poured all over us for generations and trust your whore because she knows like she knows how to put you first because when you're a mum, we all know that we never put ourselves first. We are constantly going to battle for every other person other than ourselves. And when we do that, we deplete ourselves. Our cup becomes empty and empty and empty to where we literally like have tiny driplets left that we're trying to hydrate ourselves on because all we've done is give and give and give. But when we listen to our whore, when we listen to her and how she just wants to make us feel good, how she just wants to honor us and put our needs first, we can live such an integrated, balanced life. We can put our needs first and that makes us a better mother because our cups are filling, they're overflowing, they're so fucking juicy because we are putting our needs first alongside helping and putting our family alongside our own needs it's not there's no imbalance we're giving our children and our partners the better versions of ourselves because our cups are full we're not giving them the tiny driplets we're giving them a gushing waterfall of love and overflowing capacity and that's where i say is that not the life you want to live is that not what your children and you deserve to be overflowing Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like allow your whore to show you, oh, whoa, sorry, like an eagle just, or a hawk just flew right past me. Wow. Um, um, Allow, (laughs) allow, (laughs) allow your whore to show you how you can fulfill your own needs and how in doing so it's going to make you such a more, amazing mother beautiful yeah and i think here we're touching upon because i love to tap into the initiatory qualities that the mother and the whore hold inside and i feel like Mm. when you were sharing Mm. about that you also embody the whore in your in your family you know like can you can you share a bit about what that could look like or what what is an example of that So for instance, like my boys are pretty used to seeing me do my daily practices and my embodiment practices. And a lot of that is like, they know, okay, so it's midday, mommy's having her time. Um, She'll put on some music, she'll light her candles, she'll let, you know, give herself a massage, she'll dance. And that's kind of what they witness that I'm taking that time in the day along the chaos, alongside the chaos to slow down and tune into myself. And for me, that's what I do. I like to do embodiment. That is how I fill my cup. That is how I feel in tuned. And that is how I feel good in my body. For other mothers, it could be so many different things. But for me, this is what it is. And that's what they see me do every single day. And my favorite is when they decide to come and dance alongside me and they're like doing their little <laughs> their little baby snakes their little condolinis next to me and it's it's pretty cool to see them embodying um the sensuality as well so freely especially in a little male body mm, beautiful and i feel yeah. like this is such a beautiful transmission and such an important one that where like yeah i i, I remember a conversation with a mom and she would like be so blocked in her whore energy and her sensuality when she would even be in the same house as the kids Mm. But she would literally need to go out of the house in another house in order to allow her whore energy her sensuality to come forward mm. and i feel as you're sharing mm. this this is such a beautiful important initiation for the ones in the family or in the same house to receive that wave of permission for this energy yeah because that's what i think yeah. it is i feel that's the, the the initiatory quality is that wave of permission to welcome this energy inside of us and that that's okay. That it's okay. And that it's normal. Like how else are we going to rewrite the freaking scripts? Because if we don't be the change we want to see, then it's not going to freaking change. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. The permission and the acceptance and just the aliveness that 
uh, that can come throughout the entire household by allowing that energy to come in is profound. Mm, beautiful. Mm. So, so to close, what would you say to the ones who are listening and they feel like, oh my God, I want to welcome more, <laughs> more energy. I want to explore more my sensuality and, and, mm. and allow that mm. wave of permission. What, what would you say or what would you like mm. recommend as a question or an explanation? Yeah, yeah, definitely. For me, for me, my it's 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 a tangible thing for me like to invite the whole energy into my body i need to touch my body i need to rediscover my body i need to actually slow down because as as a mom it's like go 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 all the time and by the end of the day you can be so touched out and not really want to receive touch from another person and that can really block your sensual energy um so for me, inviting the whore into my being has to be tangible. I have to slow down and actually acknowledge every little aspect of my body mm -hmm. and in areas that you wouldn't normally touch. And it's learning to love yourself in a way that turns you on so freaking much. It doesn't matter about having sex or coming to a climax it's about really honoring every single part of you and that's where the mother and the whore come into play here it's like you are mothering yourself you are loving yourself you are touching mm -hmm. yourself and so that is a beautiful place to start like be your own best lover like light your own freaking candles cook yourself a delicious fucking meal like do all the things you would want your lover to do for you and do them for yourself and see how beautifully the mother and the whore come out to play when you do that. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I just noticed a part of me that sometimes can feel uh, a little bit worried about becoming a mother. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like with this conversation with you, I can feel that part of me more relaxed yeah and yeah more yeah and more surrender yeah yeah Thank and you the thing so is you, yeah you're so welcome like becoming a mom that you literally can't control it or or prepare or you just have to surrender and and a beautiful thing i guess the whore shows you is surrendering into your pleasure and surrendering into what life gives you and how can you turn that into something beautiful and um, magnificent and that is motherhood as well you know like surrender into motherhood like see where it takes you like you can turn anything into whatever you want mm. yeah beautiful thank you thank you so so much yeah. no worries thank you so much for having me this was awesome mm.